This is Rescue Shuttle Control with an urgent, time-critical message. Our sensors have detected the presence of unidentified alien craft approaching your location. They are potentially hostile, and it's important for us to get you off the planet as soon as possible. You've uh, done very well so far in your preparations and simulations, and unfortunately, we won't have time to do any more simulations. We're going to have to lift off the planet right now and uh, get you prepared for uh, autopilot and navigation after we've reached orbit. So at this time, in today's session, the preparations necessary for you to use what you've learned in our previous communication sessions and uh, actually uh, get the shuttle up and flying. We are going to make uh, use of some of the things that we've learned in our recent sessions and also some of our older ones. And uh, you will be uh, hopefully well prepared to uh, get things running. Let's have a look first at the hardware setup. Let's look at the wiring because we are going to have to uh, put together a few things that we've uh, been using uh, recently. You'll notice that unlike our uh, most recent activities, uh, we've got enough separate components going on here that we needed to bring in the external wiring and the breadboard again. You'll notice that uh, during the flight, we'll be making use of the OLED graphical display, the seven segment display for our countdown, and we'll also be making use of the uh, audio buzzer in order to have some audio feedback on the um, countdown. And we'll also be providing input to the flight systems using the uh, dip switches that uh, we were introduced to in some of our earlier sessions. We'll go into a little bit more detail on how those are all hooked up just to remind you but uh, you may want to go back in the time available to you, review some of our earlier sessions in order to um, refresh your memory. Probably the easiest one to review at this point is the OLED display because that hasn't changed any from our configuration from our last couple of sessions. You'll see that we are powering the OLED display with power and ground connected directly to the uh, corresponding pins on the left-hand side of the HERO board here. And so that hasn't changed. And we also have uh, our two clock and data lines necessary to implement the I2C communication that the OLED display uses. So that hasn't changed. Our seven segment display is gonna have to share power and ground with the other components on the breadboard. So what we've done is we've uh, continued to have the uh, clock and DIO lines for the uh, seven segment display go to pins four and five as before on the Hero. But the uh, power and ground, the red and the black wires you see here are uh, moved over to the breadboard. And you'll notice that the red line is going into the vertical red row of the breadboard, which in turn is connected by this red line to five volts on the Hero. Likewise, the ground line uh, that uh, is uh, used for the um, seven segment display is going over to this blue vertical row of pins on the breadboard. And this vertical row is ground by virtue of being connected by this black wire to ground on the Hero. So we now have both a power and a ground bus available for use on the breadboard. Moving then over to what's installed on the breadboard, this should be relatively straightforward uh, review for you, but we have the uh, audio buzzer, which you'll recall requires two inputs from us. One is the uh, driving input, which is through this yellow line. This yellow wire is connected to the output uh, pin 9 on the Hero. We'll make sure that our code reflects that correctly. 
and this white wire is basically connecting back here to the ground bus. So those are all the connections that are necessary for uh, the uh, audio uh, playback, the audio feedback that we need. And finally, we need to look at the inputs that we're going to be providing through the positioning of these three dip switches. The three switches are labeled from bottom to top, one, two, three, and those will have the functions of controlling your uh, propulsion or the thrust, uh, your uh, flight control systems or your avionics, and then finally a go, no go confirmation switch, which would be switch number three. We'll go over those a little bit more carefully when we're uh, looking at the code, but for the moment, just notice that what we have is each of these three dip switches is connected on its high side to the five volt bus, the plus five volt bus. Then when the switch is closed, then we have a complete current path that passes through a current limiting resistor and down to ground. And just above the resistor at each point, there's a wire that's connecting to a corresponding input pin on the hero so that we'll know that when the voltage on each one of those pins goes high, it means that the switch has been closed and that switch has been activated. But when the switch is open, then the voltage will be low. And so um, that is how we will control the uh, launch sequence. And um, hopefully we'll have code that corresponds to the wiring that we've just produced. So let's now, in the interest of time, let's go ahead and have a look at our code and see just exactly how this is going to correspond. Much of this will look familiar to you from the last few sessions, and so hopefully we can uh, go through these quickly, but uh, pause at any time if you need to uh, make sure everything is correct because uh, we won't get a chance to redo this. Uh, this is not a simulation. You'll notice that our libraries, uh, once again, include libraries for controlling the seven segment display and the U8G or the uh, OLED graphical display. As before, we've defined a few macros. Uh, we are gonna be doing a countdown. And so we have our macros for converting milliseconds into minutes and seconds. That probably needs no further uh, explanation, but check the last session if you need to refresh your memory. We've defined uh, some pin numbers. And so um, you'll notice here that hopefully in accordance with the way that we wired it up on the Hero, we've got Pin 8 corresponding to the propulsion switch, pin 7 corresponding to the avionics switch, and pin 6 corresponding to the uh, final OK proceed switch. And so when you're hooking this up, you'll want to go over here and double check and make sure that indeed 6 is connected to the third dip switch, which in fact it is and so on. So uh, we have one more pin definition here, and this is the pin which is providing the signal to our audio buzzer. And so pin nine corresponds to this variable audible confirm. So pin nine is connected by this yellow wire to the positive side of our buzzer. All right, moving along. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be using the seven segment display using the clock and DIO pins corresponding to pin five and four on the hero. That would be these two right here. The brown is pin five, the purple wire is pin four. And so that gets used immediately when we define our display objects. The display object that uh, will uh, allow us to access the OLED panel is this one right here, my U8G panel. And our uh, display object for our seven segment display, once again, uh, named my display, you can name it whatever you want, with the corresponding pin number assignments. We've got uh, the countdown variable that uh, we used in our previous session. Here's our time limit. An important thing to note here, 
since uh, we're doing a, a real liftoff here and uh, not just a simulation. We've currently set our time limit here to be 100,000 milliseconds, that is 100 seconds. Since the millisecond clock begins as soon as you upload the program, it means that you will have 100 seconds between the time that you upload the program and you need to have all the switches, the dip switches confirmed and configured and ready for liftoff. So if you think it will take you longer than 100 seconds to set those switches, you'll want to re-evaluate this number and set it to a larger value because otherwise there's the danger that more milliseconds will uh, elapse than this time limit and then you'll have a negative number and that is not what we want. So little note of caution there. Also, we have a couple more variables here whose use will become clear in just a moment. Pause and pause two. They're currently set to zero, which is logical false, and they'll be set to one or logical one according to the events that transpire once uh, things start to happen. All right, that's our uh, setup of our objects and our variables. Let's have a look at the main routines, the main subroutines that we're using here. Here's our setup routine, and it should look very familiar to you. It's got the usual components in it necessary to initialize our seven segment display, necessary to initialize our U8G OLED display. And we've also thrown in uh, a little bit of a blast from the past pin mode calls necessary to set our uh, dip switch pins to accept input. So here we have our propulsion, avionics, and proceed switches set to input. That's all that's going on in setup. It happens once. And now we turn our attention to the loop routine. The loop routine uh, is a little bit more complicated than last time because last time we were just doing a simulation. And so we allowed the countdown to proceed as soon as we ran it. Uh, here we're going to uh, wait for confirmation to come from uh, pilot activity on the switches. So you'll see that the first thing that happens in loop is that we do a digital read on the propulsion switch. If that's true, and it's also true that avionics switch is on, and it's true that the final proceed switch is on, if all three of those is true, then the pause switch, the pause variable, will be changed from zero to one. So that will be ready. Of course, we're not quite ready to start the launch sequence yet. And so what happens is if pause is equal to one, but pause two is still zero, it means that the crew has not yet been notified that launch is imminent. And so if this is true, pause equals one, pause two equals zero, then we call a routine that activates an audio alarm. Uh, that's this routine play beep boop. Uh, so after a set of warning tones and a brief pause has occurred, which we'll see, then pause two is set to one. And so now when both pause and pause two are set to one, then the next time through, this test will pass and we're ready to call countdown. At that point, you better have your seatbelt fastened because countdown and launch are imminent. All right, we're almost done going through the logic here, and hopefully you can reproduce this or something equivalent to it in time to get off the planet uh, soon. Our countdown routine is the same as the countdown routine that we used in our simulation last time. Just to refresh your memory, you'll notice that we are going to have a time remaining, which is time limit minus the millisecond count. And provided that you didn't wait too long to start flipping the switches, this time limit minus milliseconds should be a positive number. That will convert into seconds and minutes, which are displayed with a colon in the standard time format on your seven second display. And then finally, we will do the test to see whether we reach the end of the countdown. Once we approach zero, that is we're within 50 milliseconds of, of zero on the countdown, then 
the U8G OLED display will be asked to draw on the screen the visual notification that uh, liftoff has occurred. And at that point, we drop into this uh, trap mode right here so that this will not execute again and uh, we'll be underway. And uh, you should be looking for a transmission from us once you reach orbit that uh, will allow us to uh, get you going with the autopilot. Last few details here before we uh, go ahead, test this code and uh, send you on your way. Our uh, play beep boop uses uh, the techniques that we've used early in previous sessions to play a set of uh, ascending tones that uh, should get the attention of you, the crew uh, of the spacecraft. And then uh, finally, our draw routine is just the same, pretty much just the same as what we've done in our previous simulation, which is that we uh, draw a liftoff message on the panel and then return. So that in a nutshell is what uh, we need to do. We need to try and make sure that the, the uh, code is uh, correctly entered and has the correct correspondence to your circuit. And so we're gonna do one last uh, check on compilation to make sure that we don't have any syntax errors in our code. Okay, no uh, compile errors. And so now, we're going to go ahead and upload the code, and then we'll have 100 seconds in which to confirm our switch positions, switch them from off to on, and then hopefully sit back and wait for launch to occur. I'm, of course, just doing this uh, as, a, as a simulation, but when you're doing it, you'll actually be ready to, uh, to lift off the planet. So good luck, and let's go ahead and see how this works. Uploading now. All right, uploading is underway, and uploading is complete. All right, switch number one. Let's activate propulsion systems. Okay, switch one is in the on position. No change in status. Activate switch number two, navigation avionics. Switch two is ready to go. All right. Look around, everything looks fine. Let's re uh, give final confirmation to proceed. Final confirmation to proceed is on. And we have... Okay, our audio warning is underway and the countdown is proceeding. We just passed the one minute mark. We're down to uh, 52 seconds. All systems are still go. Sequencing on the hero appears to be proceeding as expected. Liftoff anticipated in 30 seconds. 25 seconds. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Launch. Lift off. Confirmed lift off. We wish you the best and we will be in touch with you once you reach orbit. This is Rescue Shuttle Control signing off for the moment. And remember, build everything and fly safe.